Welcome back and I hope you all are prepared for digital empowerment not only for yourself but for others also and now you know that we are having series of lectures which talk about the different portions of the meaning we intend to cover all syllabus of digital empowerment given by University of Delhi UGCF. We have already done an introduction to value added courses, then we talked about Digital India project, their advantages and limitations. Maybe if you like to go back, you can watch in the playlist, you would see the videos, previous videos. But today I plan to teach you DigiLocker, some of you may be familiar already, but you know when I am preparing you for community service to teach this to others, the level of knowledge you should have should be more than what you have as a user. So let us first begin with DigiLocker. What is DigiLocker? DigiLocker is a digital space provided by the Indian Ministry of Electronics and IT under the Digital India Initiative. And why it is called as DigiLocker? Because it is a locker like we have in the bank where we keep our valuables and it is accessible to us at our request and it is safe. And same way DigiLocker we keep our uh, digital documents and uh, they are safe. It is a space, it is a digital space which is provided by the government. So what DigiLocker allows you that you can store your documents digitally including your driving license, vehicle registration, certificates and academic mark sheets. Like while doing the admissions in the university I observe now many of the students they do not submit the physical copy which is good also because in Digital India project we want to minimize the use of paper because we save lot of uh, energy of the environment if we use less of the paper. So Digital India project fits in that also like I see many of the students they are submitting document in DigiLocker but we have to increase this practice and teach others also like suppose if you want to teach one of your auntie in the neighborhood is that then you are not going to teach her the, uh, the uh, certificates maybe, but she will always pick it up from you that auntie if you use this DigiLocker for your driving license, for your travel document and other important documents, you will be really benefited because then you do not have to carry them with you always, they are always there in their phone and you can always use this. So that way you should, you should meaning actually use and and convince the society and your people around you to use it more for different purposes. So what happens in DigiLocker? You have like in, in your bank locker, you have large size locker, you have small size locker. But in DigiLocker, earlier government used to give us 100 MP, MB of space, but now we get it up to 1 GB of storage space. And we can keep all their documents there, but the individual file has to be up to 10 MB in size. This is the thing, it meaning it should be up to 10 MB in size. But to access this, you must have your Aadhaar number and that Aadhaar number must have your phone registered with that. So if you do not have that, then you really cannot uh, uh, subscribe to DigiLocker, right? And it will send you one time password after you register and after authentication of that, you can uh, install DigiLocker. I will just show you in a while how to install maybe some of the screenshots for those who are actually learning this for the first time. So it will be a good idea to see how do we install the uh, DigiLocker in our laptop. So I told you already it is of utmost benefit to the students. The only problem comes when these people are actually not using for the good things which government is developing. So you can store your documents, they become available to you anywhere, anytime and you have authentic documents meaning uh, you have original several of the documents like Aadhaar card and some of the and other documents they are at par to the original in your DigiLocker. So DigiLocker subscribers is increasing exponentially like if I just check the figure today we have 190.533 million users of DigiLocker today and uh, it, the, it is increasing and the, uh, the number of documents is 6.27 billions which are stored. But the another important interesting thing which comes because I am just talking from the point of view of the community service. that. You know, I know all of you know how to use DigiLocker, but if you are going to convince 
some of your neighbor or your grandmother at your home. How will you do that? She will ask you, the bank gives me all security that my jewelry is safe there. But how do you convince me that my documents in DigiLocker are safe? So then what will you answer for that is that the DigiLocker has very strict security measures like one thing is, is it 256-bit SSL encryptation. It has a mobile authentication when you sign up, meaning that person used to have your mobile. It is ISO 27001 certified, meaning certified like for your hallmark which you have in your jewelry, same way it is certified by the Bureau of Standards. You do not have data redundancy here and you have timed logout. If you do not use it for a while, it will be logged out and it has security audit. So, your security, your documents are absolutely safe and nobody will be like bank locker able to touch them there. And they've been, there has been a rapid jump in the use of digi lockers because in April, the central government urged municipal bodies to use digi locker to make their administration paperless. There is one more important good term which is coming here is that URI. What is URI? Anybody might ask you and then you will say that no, no, you are talking wrong. It is URL. But URI is Uniform Resource Identifier and it is different from Uniform Resource Locator that is URL because URI is generated by the issuer department which is mandatory for every e-document of the DigiLocker system. So, URI is an identifier which is prepared by the issuer department. There are two type of documents in your DigiLocker. One is where you keep a copy of your documents, right? And the other one is that you just provide the link, meaning the government agency is issuing you the e-document and you uh, get a URI link for that. So, there are two documents. Suppose if you want to store your 10th class mark sheet, you will take a scanned document of that and store that. But if you are storing your Aadhaar, you do not need to take a scanned copy because the URI of that will work as same as the other thing is authenticated. And now we are at a stage where we are extensively using the, uh, the digi lockers and in 2023 government of India also introduced that the passport application can also be integrated with the digi locker. That was the latest and government has been producing the several uh, laws and amendments to the IT Act so that the digi locker becomes popular and is safe and secure for the general public to use. So now I will quickly tell you how to install digi locker. So teaching installing digi locker to these J and J students would be a fun again because they know much more about it. But you know, it's a government app and it's of official use. Uh, you have to be aware and you have to take it seriously. So you will go to Play Store like you go for any other app and then find the app DigiLocker. Press install and after it is installed, it might take some time because of your internet speed or other uh, system requirements. but uh, very soon you will see that it asks you to open the app. So, once it is installed, you open the app and after you have opened, you will see a screen like this. Yes, you, can, you will see a screen like this and there you got to select your language. Language is English and after selecting the language, you have to secure this and what it is it wanting from you to secure is that you just press let go and get started with this and you have how many million users every day it is telling you. Then you got to create an account here and there you have to add all the information your full name, date of birth, whether male, female, mobile number and you have to write the mobile number which is linked to your Aadhaar. And then you have to design a six, pin, six digit pin for yourself and you have to remember this. So, after you have submitted this pin and you have submitted your and you have created a log, I, login ID for yourself, then you are ready to log in. So, so, now to sign in you need to have your Aadhaar number or username and then you must remember your six digit 
pin to log in right so my question to you is can an nri have a digilocker facility can he use this what is your answer all of you what do you feel about this the straight answer is no, because he, we, he might have a Aadhaar card when he visited India, then he has to maintain a phone Indian mobile number. If he is maintaining, then it he might be, otherwise he cannot take the DigiLocker at somebody else's name or he have to have a phone number which is linked to DigiLocker. So, NRIs in normal course will not be able to use this DigiLocker facility of Government of India, because they may not have the Indian mobile number which is linked with the Aadhaar number. So, right. So, you have logged in now and after logging in you will see a picture like this. Another important thing which we were talking in theory is that you have OTP verification that is a very good security feature here is that you cannot do anything without a mobile registration here and then you get a OTP right. If NRI anywhere is trying to use then maybe they are not able to fit in the OTP as quickly. So, OTP is another security attached to this and you must enter the OTP to verify and get into your DigiLocker account. So, this is the view which you will get after you log into your account and you can store the different types of documents and I hope you can see here that your documents must be stored. It was a new account which we opened just for this purpose. So, I hope you now have learnt the DigiLocker and you can use it well. Maybe you were able to use it well, but I believe after being studying this as a two credit paper in, in Delhi University curricula and you will be able to meet the aims of that meaning you should become a good citizen you should convey this to others around you teach others around and propagate the government's digital india mission that government has provided this digital locker save paper print less and save your documents in digital locker and this way inculcate the patriotic feeling in you so with this i come to an end of today's talk on digital india and this has been the third talk in this series. We already talked about Digital India project and the general aims and objectives of value added courses. What I am trying to tell you here is that we might have few quick lectures now on VAC on interesting topics, but the one way, one way teaching does not serve the whole purpose. I would love to hear from you and let us see how many of you comment and how many of you have questions, please contact me directly to ask anything if you want to ask. Thank you.